You know, I'm seeming very headless today. But don't evaluate how headless you are. See, our mind is just an underestimation of our presence. Whatever you can estimate in your mind about your being, about your presence, that consciousness, that Atma, can never match its reality. So whatever you take yourself to be, you are bigger than that. And you can't meet what I'm saying through an idea that you have. See, that's why the mind, we are always picking on the mind. Some, sometimes I get this complaint, Father, why are you always picking on the mind? Isn't the mind also consciousness? It is consciousness, but it's representations. So if you have a Picasso in front of you and and instead, you have a representation of a, uh, of a nursery kindergarten uh, cartoon. And then that is, somebody says, okay, this is the Picasso. You're not going to believe it. Doesn't mean you have to hate it. <laughs> you cannot take your reality to be that limited as the mind represents. And any conceptual representation of you is, is not worthy of you. See, so whatever you can try and understand about yourself is not it. It's too small for you. You are the magnificent ocean. The representation is that of a wave or not even a wave or droplet. Then how are you meant to accept this falseness as your original reality? It is impossible and because it is impossible, that is why you seem to suffer when you take that limited representation to be true. Headlessly, what is your shape? Headlessly, where do you start? What is your end? Any of these pointers, don't do them selfishly. Okay? Don't do them selfishly only means don't try to excel at it. Don't try to make something out of it. Just follow with the innocence of a child. If you're not understanding, don't understand. Let the words explode for you. You just be here and allow everything to, to unfold on its own. Now, without the concept, what are you? Do you have a beginning? Do you have a problem? Can you describe your life situation? That is your favorite hobby. That is our favorite hobby. But it is not real, it is not true. It is your hobby and actually it's more of a compulsion than a hobby. It's more of an addiction than a hobby. Because you feel like unless I'm able to determine how things are right now, how can I plan for my next move? You have no story right now. Okay? None of you have any story right now. Now, what's your next move? 
What should you do? What do you want? Where should you go? And these seem like fundamental questions that you have to answer. But to answer these, you need that subtext of my current situation. What is my description of what is true about me right now? Only then I can plan the next move. So this is our addiction. This is our compulsion. So if you were to stop it, and you can because you are consciousness, not some mere person. You are consciousness itself. You can and you can right now. You are already right now open and empty. You don't know what day it is. You don't know what your name is. You don't know what anything is in your head. But headlessly, you are not lost. Are you, can you see the beauty of this? The whole mind trick is to tell you that without all this narrative, you will be lost. But what do you find? Most of you will report that I am at peace. It is the opposite of lost. So this is the root of the trick. 